pressure and uh, human sexual evolution. This is the fourth lecture, as you know. I want to make sure you understand these concepts. They will be on the midterm. Now, I hope you've been doing the reading. I just kind of want to go over some of these, these recommended books. Some of these are actually required, so be sure to go through them. In the Kingdom of the Gorillas. Very important book. Yes, Bill Weber and Amy Vetter. Now, this book shows you the ecotourists in relationship with the silverbacks. So if you look at that page between 128 and 129, you'll be able to see the picture of the silverback. This is very important to our concept of the alpha male. Now you remember when we were in the lecture, the alpha male is the one that gets the most access to females. This is very important for the continuation of that individual's genes and for the natural selection of the fittest genes in the gene pool. Now, the next book that you should have been reading is The Strate Strategies of Sex and Survival in the Hamadreus Baboons. <laughs> this is very important as well. In this book, you learn about the female side of competition. Now, we've talked about the male-male competition and female choice in the gorilla tribes. In that situation, the two silverback males, the two alpha males, uh, they're vying for that alpha position. They will fight it out until they actually are the alpha male. Then they get access to all the females. They chase the other al alpha male out. The females, on the other hand, will compete for access to the alpha male. Why? Because their offspring will be protected by that male. Very important here. One of the most important books is also a popular book. This is The Selfish Gene by Richard Dawkins. Now, in this book, we learn that it isn't about individual survival, and it isn't about group survival. As far as the selection goes, it's the gene that's important. In fact, this book tells us that sex is actually bad for an individual because it exposes us to disease and makes us vulnerable. And I'm talking about the individuals in our primate relatives, groups. On the other hand, for the gene, it's very good. Sex is very good because the gene can then recombine and be more resistant to disease. This is a very important concept for you to remember. <laughs> this book, Eros, Eros and Evolution, The Natural Philosophy of Sex. This reinforces the idea that genes are what it's all about. Sex is not good for you. It's good for your genes. Yeah. <laughs> now this one is one that I've really done a lot of study on. <laughs> Our inner ape, Franz de Waal. This one is the most important, I think. Because it tells us that there are actually three different primate groups that are the most interesting to study compared to humans. The gorillas that I already talked about, chimpanzees, and bonobos. You know about bonobos. <laughs> What's important here is that bonobos don't use sex just for reproduction. They use it for affection, appeasement. In fact, it's not only male-male, male-female sex. It's male-male sex. It's female-to-female -female sex. It's adult-to-juvenile sex. There's sex everywhere in bonobo tribes. It's, excuse me, it's getting a little warm.
Sitting on top of the world. 